to John chapter 4. This must be emphasized more and more. This cannot be overemphasized among the body of Christ today. We must learn to function outside the realms of the flesh. Flesh is in the comfort zone. Nothing grows there. Amen. There is nothing in the flesh by the standard of God's word Amen. that is given to benefit your spirit. My prayer is that as we hear and listen to the word of God our spirit man is not working for battle. We have not been called as a church to engage in any negotiation with the devil. We have not been called as a church to come into any resolution with the devil. We have been called to put the devil to where he belongs. Amen. And to do that as a church in prayers. The only language, the only asset that the devil understands is the language of violence. From the days of John the Baptist till this day, the church, the kingdom of God, the body of Christ is still dealing with violence. It's only there that stand on the gap and take it by force. It is time for us as God's people. To recognize the authority that has been given to us. Amen. It is time for you as a man to recognize the authority God has given to you as a man of God. The priest of your home. As a woman of God. A builder of your home. John chapter 4 is 24. If you have to repeat this to yourself every day, wake up and remind yourself and repeat yourself. Repeat it to yourself every day. He says, God is a spirit. And they that must engage in activities, worship is an activity. Activities erect altars. You must do it in spirit and in truth. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. So your spirit man inside you has to come alive and receiving classified information from God and authority you shutting down the works of darkness against the church, against God's people, Amen. against ministers, and against the kingdom of God. That is the reason why heaven calls you an ambassador and representatives of kingdom of heaven. So we are to engage in warfare. This word of God that we are hearing, many could read it, carnally read it, with all human knowledge. But we must understand this. 
It is not just a word written by man. It is spiritually discerned. A human intelligence cannot piece it together how it works or it functions. It takes the spirit. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. If you are there, shall we amen? Let the redeemed shout amen. Amen. Verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. He said, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Natural man. Those that engage in natural stuff cannot comprehend the word of God. Cannot make sense out of the word of God. Because their inside is filled with natural stuff. Carnal stuff. Material stuff. Worldly stuff. Everything that is humanly made by hand will defy and destroy your ability to be spiritual. It makes it impossible for you to find the frequency of the spirit and tap in the realm of God. Why? Because we are overwhelmed with our possessions, what we have. And sometimes we bring those possessions in the house of God and we think that's what makes spiritualism happen. That is where money cannot give you help. Amen. Money can't make you happy. Amen. You can't find joy in money. Amen. Mansions, wealth, riches cannot give you no fulfillment. Amen. You can only find peace in God. Money can't give you peace. The word of God said, perfect peace are only for those whose mind is in God. Mind outside God can have peace. It is carnal. It is worldly. It is earthly. This word of God has been given to you and I so we can tap into the promises of God for us that we might enjoy all that God has for us. Set your heart, set your affections on things above and not on earthly things. This morning we are going to be praying. The natural mind, natural man, receive it not the things of the Spirit of God. Amen. So if you are bringing the Word of God, visions and revelations to the natural man, you are offending them. Natural man want to discuss sightseeing, building, materials, things that are seen by human eyes. And when David was trying to impress God and trying to talk about Lord, I build your house. The Lord stopped David. I said, "You," he, he, he said, "You, you were a sheep boy." Amen. When I brought you out. Amen. Let me quick, let us quickly go there because we're going to be praying. I want to get our mind into the realm so that when we pray, you pray with understanding. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Quickly go to Second Samuel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 7. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
just crossed my spirit. I wanted to quickly read it. Second Samuel chapter 7. Let, let, let's go to verse 8. Amen. Please, I just want to quickly get the, the If you have time, read the whole chapter 7. And if it just, I just want to bring us something from verse 8. He said, Now therefore, so shall what thou say unto my servant. Thou say the Lord of hosts. Is that in your Bible? I took thee from where? From a sheep coat. You know what a sheep coat means? Those that watch sheep, you have a coat you put on. A sheep coat. I took you from where? A sheep coat. From following what? The sheep. To be who? I brought you from an unqualified state. You didn't ask me for it. When someone came to your father's house, you were out there with the sheep. You, you were sent for. You did not understand why you have to leave the field watching the sheep and come home. You know, sometimes you're on the job and the somebody's home. Come. You run home to see who is at home. That was how it happened. So there's nothing you're going to impress me with. If you read down, the Lord says, I don't live in houses built by hands. No wonder David found a place of worship because he understood where God dwells. He inhabit the worship, the praises of his people because God is spirit. Quickly, let's go back again to 1 Corinthians. As the year is coming to an end, it is time for us to begin to pray. That a new calendar will be opened in the realm of the spirit. Amen. And I speak to you before the year will be over, your reign will still fall. Amen. All that God has for you this year will not pass. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, For for they that are what? For they are what? Foolishness unto him. The carnal mind are foolishness. The word of God is foolishness unto the carnal mind. Neither can he what? Know them because they are what? Spiritually what? Design. Very critical for you to begin to tap into the things of this. How do I become spiritual? How do I know God? How do I become spiritual? Become desiring spiritual things. Be mindful of spiritual things. Set your mind on what? On spiritual things. Engage in the word of God and let the word of God transcend on the things you desire. Spiritual things. Your interests. Your mind cannot be carnal. When you are constantly thinking about material stuff, it is impossible for you to be spiritual. A church that is engaged in all material stuff, gradually, you don't even know when you creep into materialism. Gradually. It's a gradual process. You lose the grip of the things of the spirit. Looks. Fashion. Clothes. Money, car, wealth. I want to be like that brother. I want to be like that sister. I want to be like that family. I want to be like be who God has designed you to be. You are unique in your own way. Amen. In your very best that God has designed you, you are better than everybody. Amen. You have more than everybody. If God has blessed you with a dollar, you are richer than a one person carrying one million dollars. In your own, you are rich. Amen. Because God has given it to you. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. Write the scriptures down because we're going to be praying. Four key prayers this morning. Verse 5.
The word of God is spiritually designed. Please, let's take it very serious. And when people bring things to you, design them with the word of God, with due respect. Verse 5, he said, For they that are after the flesh, when whatever you are after, you are, your mind, they mind the things of the flesh. They put their mind in it. They concern about it. It's what makes them happy. It's what brings them joy. True joy comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is only your strength. And they that are after the Spirit, do mind what? The things of the Spirit. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is dead. Father, deliver us from dead. Do you understand? See, it, I mean, that for, to be carnally minded, we are not different from those in the grave. Do you understand the spiritual structure of that world? So, which means it is possible for a man to be walking around and he has the same nature of the man in the grave. Why? Because the mind is set on carnal things. So it's a matter of time for that person to join. I am speaking to us this morning that this should set the church free so that when the power of God moves, it can move in God's people and things will begin to happen in our midst. These are the hindrances. Not that God is not moving anymore. He said, my hand is not shut, that it cannot move. My ear is not heavy, that I cannot hear. But the carnality level of these last days of the spirit and God won't compromise his word. Amen. He said he's dead. How can a man be alive and be dead? How many people do you see walking around they are dead? They don't say a mind that is set on kind of thing is as good as a mind in the body in the grave. Let the fire of God destroy the spirit of carnality in our church. Lord, let the power of God come upon the ministries, the body of Christ, leaders of homes and marriages. Destroy death in the name of Jesus Christ. When you understand this in the spirit, you will, still, you will be praying. Many times we are, in, we are, we are initiated into it. We are introduced into death and not knowing. And carry a Bible in our hand, going to church. <coughs> but our work is no longer functioning in faith, but in kind of stuff. And faith without work is dead. Amen. God said, I'm spirit. Amen. If you and I will come in here this morning, and for as many hearing this and you're in churches anywhere you are. And you remain the same meeting with Christ because you felt nothing. No one meet with him and remain the same. Amen. Can a mind is dead. But a mind that is spiritual is what? Life and peace. Why is it dead? Verse 7 because the kind of mind is what? It's enmity with God. That is the reason why the devil wants the church to be enmity with God. It brings the church into a life of carnality. Bring your money in. Doesn't matter how you get it. Sleep with whoever you want to sleep with. Doesn't matter how you do it. Have five boyfriends and six girlfriends. Doesn't matter who you sleep with. Just come to church. Fill the place. Dance and jump. Because I'm not flesh, but I'm spirit. Verse 8. Verse 7 said, In limited with God, for it is not what? Subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. It is impossible. It is impossible. And that's the reason why the devil is pressing 
choking up, introducing new stuff, a form of godliness in church with no power, no more prayer. Every activity, but there's no prayer. Every garden, but there's no prayer. One or two minutes of prayer, we are fine. We're engaging five, six hours of kind of activity, but two minutes of prayer. The devil loved that. Verse 8 says, And they that, that are in the flesh, no wonder the devil wants to make sure he drag the church into a fleshly gathering so God cannot be pleased. The Bible calls the devil the master of deception. As we have been praying since last week, Ezekiel chapter 22, 29 to 31, the Lord sought for a man, the Lord sought for a church who will stand and age on the God to pray. There's mercy of God and there's judgment. Both can cross each other. God respects those laws that belong to him. He respects those portions of him. He allows both to function freely and is involved in both. We learn in the book of Genesis judgment was heading to Sodom and Gomorrah. God released judgment. At the same time, he was discussing mercy with, with Abraham. How can my judgment return back? If I find 50, the Lord said, go ahead. But my judgment is on its way. If you find 50, my judgment will find its way back. God was discussing mercy. So we must understand the principles of God's word. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. Brethren, we are going to be praying today that the power of God will descend and disappoint the devices of the crafty against the church. That their hands cannot perform their evil enterprise. Turn your Bibles as we pray this morning. Jeremiah chapter 30. Can you shout amen? amen. Jeremiah chapter 30. Verse 16. Four prayers we're going to be praying this morning. Wherever you are, if you want to stand on your feet, if you want to sit down, I want us to lift our voice and pray this morning. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16. We're going to be praying this prayer globally in the, for the body of Christ, for ministers, for our homes, for our children, for our health, for tomorrow, in advance of things to come back to us ahead. The horse is prepared for battle. Victory belongs to the Lord. I speak to you this morning if you are hearing the sound of my voice. The Lord needs some battle ass in his hand. You are one of them. Amen. You are not a weak ass in his hand. Neither are you a weak arrow. The Lord is going to send you places like an arrow. I said you are a dynamite in his hands. I said you are a life wire in his hand. You are a grenade in his hand. Amen. Verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Lift up your voice this morning. Whatever forces has been sent. To devour your home, your marriage, your ministry, your God giving assignment, we are declaring today. Every four sent to devour ministers, leaders, pastors, bishops, those that God has placed in position in this generation to stand on the gap for the church, the esters of this generation, the root of this generation, the devourer of this generation. In one accord this morning, we pray that they might be devoured in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and we declare that they that move and advance to the church, they devour. 
against the church to, to cause greatness in the church. To turn the heart of the church. In the name of Jesus. Away from doing the things that God has called them. One of them shall be devoured. We declare them to be devoured. Satanic agents. In the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we decree, O God Almighty. Jesus, the peace of these generations. We set the fire of God to devour them in the name of Jesus. That carries the spirit of fornication and doctrine in the church. That they may be devoured in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare them devoured in the name of Jesus Christ. Forces that carry affliction shall be devoured in the name of Jesus Christ. Infirmities and diseases. Every one of them that shall be devoured. Enemies of the gospel that will find the truth. Crossing the front lines. Sitting in high chairs in the church. But you are Satan agents. They shall be devoured. We set the atmosphere of God. We set the atmosphere on fire. We release the will of God's power to devour us. Just like the days of Elijah, the fire of God came down and devour the prophets of God. Expose them and they shall be devoured. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will find their way into the heart of ministers. Taking advantage of their needs and their vulnerability. They shall be devoured. They will not succeed. Angels will say to bring down churches. To create this punishment in the book of Christ. They shall be devoured in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And all they, and all the adversary, every one of them, they that carry your name from one place to another. Enemies of your testimony. Amen. Enemies of God's goodness in your life. Adversaries. Sambalak and Tobayak in the church. Ethophers in the church. Those that when the church is building, they are finding a way to tear it down. They that sit down to discuss that evil foxes will bring down the building. They are never contributing to the work. Amen. Their presence is a discouragement. Every one of them. That's what I'm saying. Every one of them. Shall go to captivity. In the name of Jesus. Every one of them. They that must themselves as agents of life. Ministers of Satan and not of the gospel of Christ. We stand in authority this morning. All of them shall be exposed. And let him say that he will alter. We set them on fire and we declare them into captivity. Lord God and Lord God. Join your master in the blood of the spirit. The Bible says, just like Satan must run himself as an angel of life, so his minister has done that. Deceiving many, making merchandise of God's people. We pray this morning. According to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16, they all shall go into captivity. Amen. They are in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and say, 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 Heavenly Father, we send them into captivity. Send them into captivity. In the name of Jesus.
Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. We arrest our functions in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. In the book of Acts, the Bible says, Paul and Cantor, one of their God, and he was turning the heart of a deputy away from God. Amen. 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 And you shall go blind, and you shall be red by head. I said, God cast his eyes and send him into captivity. He will get back from that day. We we'll pray this morning. That same Jesus Christ that arrested Alima and sent him into captivity shall go after every apostle of the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of God arises in the blood of Christ today. They are all going to In Jesus' name, they shall be exposed in the name of Jesus. And all they that spoil thee shall be spoiled. They that have carried themselves as an evil contractor, going around spoiling the name of Christ in your life, spoiling God's goodness. What God is doing, the testimony and the wonders of God, they're going about spoiling. The word of God said, the authority has been given to us, we declare them a spoil. We declare them a spoil. We arrest their functions. You take the voice and pray. I said, we declare them a spoil. They shall be a spoil. In the name of Jesus. Whatever they pray, they shall be a spoil. Wherever they go, they shall be a spoil. When something spoils, it decays. We declare them a spoil and we surround them with decay in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who loves God Almighty that wants to spoil us, Lord God Almighty, they shall be a spoil in the name of Jesus Christ. It's getting the little of his voice. Trying to spoil the work of God. The Bible says he decayed on the tongue. Words came out from his grave. So shall it be. We shall be a spoil. No power can spoil God's goodness in your life. No power can spoil the work of God in this place. Upon this church, upon your feet, my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. In Jesus' mighty name, we say finally tonight, this morning, and all they that pray thee, all they that pray thee, satanic hunters. Demonic hunters go away, wait on their way. They say, You go through this place. They set their arm, they set their, they pray thee. Pray, look for their enemy. They look to capture, to apprehend. Send us spider webs, spiritual webs. Plan, digging holes. Fake love. Fake relationship that you might fall into it. We pray today. It shall become a prayer. Amen. Lift up your voice. I said it shall become a prayer. All they that pray in the church shall become a prayer. All they that pray to the Lord of us shall become a prayer. All they that pray bishops shall become a prayer. All they that pray pastors shall become a prayer. All they that pray the believers shall become a prayer. Lift up your voice. Pray in the name of Jesus. All that pray in all that are praying your house and giving prayer. They will not escape. They will set the stage and they will fall into this. In Jesus' name. I pray. In Jesus' name. I want you to have an understanding of our prayer this morning. Do you know how long they prayed, Daniel? They were praying him. They were setting him up. How can we give him up to the lions to tear him apart? If you were to kill him, it would have been easy to kill him with a sword. But you felt that would be easy. We just wanted to feel the pain of being ripped apart. Oh, being ripped apart by lions. Have you ever seen a lion tearing down meat? That means that means they will feel the pain. That is the desire of a prey. That was what they desired Daniel, just for one reason. Because he prayed. Because he had integrity. 
because he has his mind made up to set his life apart to serve God. The Lord defended him. He continued. And when they threw him to be a prey, the heaven protected him. Amen. The lion of the tribe of Judah was present. The appetite of the lions were altered by the creator of the lions. The Bible said it could not touch him. But here is today. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 16. All they that prayed Daniel became a prey. Their household became a prey. Their whole house, unfortunately, the innocent wives and children fell under that category. They were all in that lion's den being ripped apart. This is the word of God. All they that pray in church shall become a prey. All of them that pray your children shall be coming. I lift up your voice and pray this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And everyone that prays the church shall be coming. Anyone. You're going out, you're coming in. Even on the church. They shall be coming. All of them that desire you to be fired. They take food off your table. They shall be coming. They shall ask for this. They will fall into their trap. The boss will discover their craftiness. The boss will discover their manipulation. The boss will seek of their behavior. They are constantly reporting you secretly. The boss will tired of their behavior because the love in their head will trigger the love of God. You shall be put in prayer. In their very face, you shall be promoted. In their very face, you shall be like a tree planted by the river side. In your very first, your reach and your queen. Amen. Stand on your feet. Father, we thank you this morning. We cover this prayer now in the blood of Jesus. We cover the prayers now in the blood of Jesus. We cover the prayers now in the blood of Jesus. We pray this over the blood of Christ. Lord, awake, O God. Send down your revival, O God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let everyone shout, Amen. Amen.